Hello wine people, you asked us to make a video about fortified wines, so that's exactly what I'm doing today. I'll explain everything what you need to know for your WST level 2 in wines course. By now, you know that this channel is all about simplifying wine and making wine knowledge more accessible to anyone. So if you just want to learn a little bit about wine or you're preparing for your WST course, or even better, you want to change the world of wine with us together, this channel is for you. So let's start with today's video. Okay, wine people, in today's video, we will talk about fortified wines. I'll explain what everything that you need to know for WST level two in wines level. We'll talk about production, different styles, labeling terminology, and on the end, I will answer 10 WST multiple choice type of question. First of all, um, uh, the two fortified wines that you need to know for a WST level 2 in wine course at this moment is um, sherry wine and fortified wine and uh, sorry port wine both of them are uh, fortified wines uh, there's different uh, types there's different styles of, of port and sherry I'll cover everything uh, but one thing that you need to know, uh, that you need to understand about fortified wines, what actually fortified wine means. Fortified wine means that the additional alcohol is added to the wine. So this is the process of fortification. I'll explain the differences between the port and, port and sherry. Uh, and also you need to understand that this kind of wines, um, this fortification before it was done, for protection purposes so these wines were fortified in order to uh, withstand long voyages uh, during the transportation of these wines and uh, the the wine making of this wine is is heavily influencing uh, the style of uh, of fortified wines so on this slide you can actually see the main differences um, and uh, things that you need to be aware uh, for for port and sherry so first of all where they're coming from fortification what is the difference so the difference between the port and sherry is the timing of 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 the fortification and you need to understand what fortification does to these wines so i'll explain everything this in detail now the point is you see here that fortification for sherry is done after the fermentation I'll explain how this affects the wine and for the port is always during the fermentation. Dryness, sherry can be dry in most cases but it can also be sweet. Port on the other hand is always sweet. Style of wine, there's many styles of, of sherry, there's many styles of port. Grapes, for sherry you need to know that uh, most sherries are made from palomino grape and there's also addition of uh, Pedro Jimenez and uh, there's uh, sherry made only with Pedro Jimenez, I'll explain. And for port wine, uh, for level two, you don't need to know any specific grape varieties, but you need to understand that in port production, there's many different grape varieties uh, that are used uh, for port production. First of all, where, um, where does sherry come from what is the appellation so sherry only comes from spain but from a very specific appellation of uh of jerez around uh the town of uh, jerez de la frontera in the south of spain you can actually see it here so there is a triangle area where actually uh, sherry wine can be made okay so um Sherry style. There's many sherry, uh, ma many sherry style, uh, many sherry styles. Um, the ones that I will explain is you can actually see them here. It's fino, amontillado, oloroso. This is the three main uh, sherry styles, and I'll explain also Paulo Cortado, medium and cream, and Pedro Jimenez. You can also see that there's a, a sherry style like Manzanilla and Paulo Cortado, which are not. Um, not mentioned in WST level two book. So, like I mentioned, for the sh uh, for fortified wine, this wine making um, is heavily influencing uh, the style of wine. For when I say wine making, it means how the wine is when the wine is fortified, 
and um, and also um, the timing of, of fortification and also for sherry wine it is important to what amount of alcohol is added to sherry so you you make your so how to make sherry you make your base wine which is around 11 percent alcohol it's made from palomino uh, and you get your base uh, white wine after that you do the fortification you do the fortification so what does fortification do it increases the level of alcohol uh, so for a fino sherry that fortification goes to 15 percent alcohol 15 15 and a half for uh for oloroso it goes up to 17 percent alcohol and i'll explain the differences between fino and oloroso the next step in the sherry wine making is the solera system i'll show you the how and what is solera system this solera system heavily influences the flavor of, of the wine and then when the the sherry is ready it's bottled and it's ready for consumption okay uh, the terminology uh, and things that you need to know for sherry production especially for uh, for the style of sherry which is called fino is floor so in this picture you can actually see how the floor looks like in in a barrel also the second thing that you need to um, so what does this floor do to the wine it actually protects the wine from oxidation so if you see uh, a glass of uh, fino wine in a glass it will actually look like a, like a white wine so it will be clear and pale lemon in, in color and this floor protects the wine from oxygen it protects it from uh, gaining more color and uh, an oxidation but it also imparts a very specific uh, biological uh, flavor of, of dough, of yeast. Uh, this is also called um, protective aging or biological aging for pheno. So there's two types of aging in, in, in sherry. One is this uh, fresh style, which, is, which looks like a, a white wine in a, in a glass. Um, so this is the protective or fresh style or biological aging with the floor and the second one is without the floor and the wine is exposed to oxygen and you get more oxidative uh, aromas and different color more deeper browner color the second thing also that you should notice on this picture is that uh, the barrels in which uh, sherry is aged they're not full so this allows for this uh, floor to develop for sherry wines and also oxidation which is important for Oloroso style of sherry. Okay, I hope this was clear and please if I'm not clear and if you have any questions please send us a message, we'll answer. So how does the Solera system uh, in sherry uh, look like and what, what is the point? So for the point of explanation, you're going to see a lot of this uh, Solera systems explained with a diagram like this, with a picture like this. All right. In reality, the sherry barrels are not stacked up in a winery like this. Usually they, you know, uh, different uh, levels uh, of aging are grouped on different locations in, in a winery. Uh, but for the purpose of the explanation, the Solera system is, is explained like this, where the different criaderas, different levels of aging, are stacked on top of each other. Okay, so Solera system is a fractional system. Fractional system it means that barrels, that wines from uh, from certain barrels are transferred uh, from one barrel to the next level. In fractional style so it means that all the wines is are, are transferred from barrel from one barrel to the next usually one third of wine at one point is transferred to the next barrel so here you see actually four levels it can be many more levels but the point for you is to understand that the the terms of sobretabla criadera and solera 
So sobre tabla is always your base wine, your beginning of solera system. The whole system is called solera system. And then the last barrels, I mean the, the last, um, the barrels that are used to fill up the bottles are called solera. Uh, solera. So the last, bottle, the last aging before bottling is called solera. And then in between the sobre tabla, so the beginning of the aging, and the solera, the final wine that is bottled, you have different uh, different criaderas. It can be one, uh, it can be second criadera. It starts from the from the last one that you have. So if you have three criaderas, it will be three, two, one. Uh, but it can be many more. So you have the sobre tabla beginning. You have different levels of criaderas, and then you have the final uh, barrel for that is meant for aging. Uh, it's called solera. Okay. Different styles of uh, you, here you can see different styles of sherry, and uh, different styles. We're going to talk about aging, color, alcohol, aromas, sweetness, uh, sweet sherries and serving temperature so here you can see that the the style of sherries that you need to know for level two for example course is fino oloroso amontillado and px short or pedro jimenez so we're going to start with fino fino uh, ages uh, biologically under floor so this uh, aging under floor uh, uh, creates wine, uh, protects the wine from oxygen and uh, creates a specific aromas of apples, nuts and dough. Apple is aroma of, of, of the wine, nuts and dough are the aromas that wine gets from, from the floor, from the biological aging. Fino can be dry, it can be sweet. If it's sweet, it's called, you're gonna, fee, you're gonna see additional labeling term on the label, uh, pale cream, which indicates that the wine will be sweet. One thing that, that I didn't mention is that Fino sherries, I told you in the beginning that um, the fortification level affects the style of wine. So you can see that Fino has around 15, 15 and a half percent alcohol. So this 15%, 15 percent, 15 and a half percent alcohol allows for biological aging. This relatively low level of alcohol allows for the floor to develop in the barrel and then protects the wine from oxygen and creates this specific uh, aromas of nuts and dough. So the fortification up to 15% allows for floor develop and to create this style of wine. Okay. For Oloroso, the wines are fortified to 17% alcohol. So the base wine, instead of being fortified to 15, like in Fino, it's fortified to 17% alcohol right away so this 17 percent alcohol doesn't allow for the floor to develop so the wines are aged oxidatively right away so it means though that barrel that was two-thirds full will not have that layer of floor that will protect the wine so the wine this uh, oloroso style will be exposed to oxygen which will create a a specific style of Oloroso, of Sherry Oloroso. So this wine will be aged oxidatively. It means that it will be deliberately oxidized. The color will be deep brown because of the oxidation. The wine will be 17% alcohol at least and higher. 
it will because of this oxidative oxidative aging it will develop different kind of aromas like raisin and prunes and also walnut and caramel which is very characteristic for oloroso the one oloroso is dry a sweet version of oloroso is called you're gonna see uh, on oloroso bottle if it's sweet it's gonna say medium so this will indicate that the uh, Oloroso is sweet. Uh, usually for, for service purposes, Fino, as soon as it's bottled, uh, recommendation is to serve it chilled and to, to drink it um, as, as soon as, it, as, as it's bottled. For Oloroso, it's a more deeper, uh, more complex wine that you shouldn't chill as much as fino and also a wine that can age additionally so we know the two main style of wine of sherry so one is fino which is biologically aged and it's more fresher style and we know the more oxidative style which is called or oloroso but now there's something in between something that has characteristics of Amontelado and also characteristics of Oloroso. It's called Amontelado Sherry. So uh, Amontelado Sherry starts its life as a Fino. So you have the, you finish the, the base wine and you fortified that wine to 15% alcohol and the wine starts aging in a solera system like uh, like a fino it develops floor but for some reason the floor uh, fades away you lose the floor so the wine then gets fortified again additionally to 17 percent alcohol and continues aging as oloroso so this wine will have medium amber color because it will not age as Oloroso. It will continue aging, but it will not have as much oxidative aromas as Oloroso. But because it started its life as Fino, it will have this specific aroma of dough and nuts. Dough, nuts and caramel. The uh, Amontelado is dry, a sweet, version of Amontelado is called cream okay this is this would be uh, one of the most complex styles of sherries so it has the aromas of a fino but it also has aromas of Amontelado of uh, Oloroso and then on the end we have a sweet version of uh, of sherry it's always sweet it's called PX or Pedro Jimenez it's going to be aged oxidatively. It will be deep brown in color, at least 17% alcohol, aromas of fig prune, raisin, molasses. This is very intense, deep in color, a super sweet uh, style of wine. Uh, and on the, on the label, you're going to see PX. It indicates this style of sherry. Okay. So to, to summarize uh, sherry, you have two styles of aging. You have biological of or floor protection aging, uh, floor protection aging, or you have oxidative aging without floor. The two style of pheno of uh, biological prote protective uh, aging under floor are called pheno. And then there's one more. If you want to remember, it's called manzanilla that needs to be made in a certain uh, appellation of sherry. And then the wines, uh, uh, the fino and, uh, and fino and manzanilla are, are, are created. You don't need to remember Paolo Cortado at, at this point. And then for the Oloroso style, you know that these wines are going to be fortified to 17% alcohol and are going to be aged uh, oxidatively. This uh, terminology VO, VOS and VORS, you don't need to remember at, at this point. Okay. I hope this was clear enough for uh, for sure. Okay, let's go to port. So the port um, you see here that is made in Portugal. That the fort uh, fortification is done during the fermentation. It's always sweet, and there's many different grapes and styles of port. 
In order for the port to be produced, it can be only produced in the region of Douro. In, in Portugal, you can see Douro here. It's in northern Portugal. It's away from the Atlantic Ocean. It's in more deeper continental area of Portugal where it's more warmer. Port wine making, you pick your grapes. Um, and then the first thing, uh, what is very important for port is the uh, color and tannin extraction. I'll show you a picture of that. When you extract your when you extract enough color and tannin, uh, you allow the wine to start uh, fermenting. And then in the middle of the uh, fermentation, when the wine is around seven eight percent alcohol, you add the the spirit. And this spirit does two things to, to port wine. First of all, it kills the, the yeast, which uh, means that the for the, uh, for, uh, fermentation will stop. So the wine, uh, the sugar that is inside the, the, the must will stop fermenting. So it means that the, the wine will be sweet. And the addition of alcohol also increases the level of alcohol in the wine. Usually ports are around 19 20% uh, alcohol and then the the final stage of aging uh, a, uh, aging the wine in the oak barrels is very important to determine the final style of uh, of port and the, when the wine is ready you bottle it so this is how uh, this um, color and tannin extraction it was done uh, in the old times uh, I'm sure even today there's uh, some examples of this, but there's also uh, robot machines that are used today to uh, to make this process more easier. So the point with this uh, treading of people treading the stamping on the grapes is to extract color and tannin, which is very important in the port production. So you can see here that there's many different styles of port. We're going to be actually there's white and rosé styles of port, but we're going to focus only on the red style. And uh, here on this picture, here you can see that um, the two main style of port, which is ruby uh, on the left. So ruby ports are going to be uh, looking like this. So deep uh, ruby or garnet in color. And then the towny style, which is going to be more paler and it will have the to uh, towny color. So uh, here on this uh, slide you see different styles of port. In general there's two main, two main ones. So either you're a ruby style, which means it is, it's more fruity and more deeper in color, usually more tannic. And then you have the towny port, which is paler in color and it's more, uh, not as fruity, but more oxidative style. Uh, then the ruby port, the, uh, the ruby style of wines is divided into ruby, in just basic ruby. So this is like more different uh, levels of quality. So the basic ruby wine uh, will be just saying ruby. Higher quality will say reserve or fine uh, ruby port. LBV is a, spe a specific style of, uh, of ruby style. Which, is, which comes from a single vintage. So actually on the LBV, LBV means late bottle vintage, you're gonna see the vintage of, of the wine. And then the vintage wine, which would be the highest quality of, of ruby style, means that uh, these are the highest quality ports and they come from a specific vintage. Not every vintage uh, is a vintage wine. Usually in 10 years, about three, four years on average are uh, declared vintage years. It means that vintage port can be made. Uh, let's start with uh, Ruby Reserve, uh, Reserve and LBV. Color will be deep Ruby. On the flavor side, it will be uh, cooked, sorry for my um, writing here, cooked black and red fruit. Quality style, light, uh, light and simple to full and complex. Ruby, reserve ruby will be lighter, simpler, where LBV, uh, late bottle vintage, will be more, um, more uh, deeper in color, fuller, more tannic structure, and more complex. Uh, LBV, 
means late bottle vintage and it's a vintage port. It means that it comes from a single vineyard. It means that if you see ruby or reserve ruby, it will be a blend of different vintages. On the vintage, uh, on the vintage port, like I said, this is the highest quality port. It will have a deep garnet color. It will have flavors of dried fruit, leather, forest floor. Uh, so you can see that the, the vintage port, you know, the color will be more g going towards garnet. Uh, the, you can see on the, on the flavor aroma side that these wines are more uh, complex. This is the highest quality ports. They need decanting. Sometimes also LBV can be decanted. But a vintage port, if you have vintage port, you definitely need to de decant this wine because this wine will have a deposit in the bottle that you would want to uh, remove. Uh, not produced every year, like I said, you know, on average, two to three vintages are declared uh, uh, vintage in 10 years. So this uh, vintage and ruby ports, they're more towards um, fruit. It means before the wines are actually bottled, the bottle, they're aged in uh, stainless steel or in oak barrels for a relatively short period of time from one to three years and then the majority of the part especially for vintage uh, actually it's aged in the bottle towny port on the other hand it's more um, the wine making is more in an oxidative way so actually before the wines are bottled they're aged for a long period of time you know barrels and have much more influence of oxidation. So the two main quality levels that you need to be aware of is if you just see a towny port saying towny, this is a simple and expensive style of uh, towny port, and then a towny port with a declaration of uh, age. Uh, you're gonna see towny port saying 10, 20, 30, 40, even 50 years. It means this is the uh, this town import will be higher in, in quality, and again, depending on the age, will depend also the the complexity of the wine. So you can understand that if it says 40 years town import, that that will be a more complex port than saying 10 years. This is not the exact uh, aging period. This is more. Uh, indication of age indication meaning that you know this if it says 10 years it means this wine looks and smells like it was aged for for 10 years so this wine will be paler in color with towny color uh simple fruity wines like uh, like towny and then more complex with higher indication of age simple to complex uh, and these wines are never vintage wines, they're blends of different vintages. Uh, labeling, you can see here four different uh, uh, port wines. So here on top, you see the fine ruby. Fine means something similar to reserve ruby port. So this will be uh, a simple ruby style port, so dominated with, with fruit. Higher quality of ruby port will be a late bottle vintage or LBV port. You can see here to the, this is a 2016 vintage. Uh, and then the highest quality of ruby ports is called vintage port. It says the brand vintage port 2017 bottled in 2019. And then you, hear, you see the towny port and with the indication of 20 years of age. Okay, a lot of things. I hope this was... Um, uh, clear enough. If you have any questions, please, please let, uh, let us know and let's cover 10 exam question. Port is always sweet. True or false? This is true. Port is always sweet. Sherry is always dry. True or false? This is false. Most sherries are dry, but there's also sweet versions of sherry. When is fortification done for sherry wine? Before fermentation, after fermentation, during fermentation, it depends on the style. The correct answer is uh, B, after the fermentation. What is not style of sherry? 
Fino or rosso, ruby, amontillado? The correct answer is C, ruby. Ruby is not style of sherry, it's style of port. Which sherry has pale lemon color? Fino, amontillado, or rosso, PX? The correct answer is A, fino. Best description for amontillado is apples and almonds, apples, dough, walnuts, almonds, prunes, raisins, figs, prunes, dough. The correct answer is B, apples, dough, and walnuts. So it has aromas of biological aging, it has also aromas of oxidative aging like walnuts. Which is not style of port? Ruby, Vintage, Oloroso, LBV. The correct answer is C, Oloroso. It's a style of sherry. Which port needs decanting? Ruby, Towny, Vintage, Reserve, Ruby. The correct answer is C, Vintage port needs decanting. Which port has oxidative aromas? Towny 30, Ruby, LBV, Vintage. The correct answer is A, Towny 30. Best description for vintage port is deep garnet, complex, powerful, deep garnet, simple and fruity, pale garnet, simple and fruity, pale garnet, complex and powerful. The correct answer is A, deep garnet, complex and powerful. Thank you so much for your time. Please let me, uh, let me know how well you did on these 10 questions. Wine people, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope this video was uh, fun, informative, and easy to understand. Please let us know if you have any questions. Uh, please, if you can consider sharing, subscribing, uh, commenting on our videos, this will help us to grow our channel and for us together to change the world of wine forever. I'll see you in the next video.